JB, thank you so much for speaking to Nampa News, the Osana Solar Farm. Up and running now. Let's yes. start at the beginning. When did it start? What was the purpose? And a little bit of the statistics. Well, um, the project has been developed over a, uh, a quite a while for, um, by this stage. Uh, we started ground clearing and so on late last year already. But effectively, the construction of this project took about four months this year. And we finally plugged into the grid in uh, the middle of August or to, no, the later part, latter part of August. Um, so this is a five megawatt plant and this is as part of the refit program. So this is a renewable energy intensive program where 14 licenses were given out across the country um, to various people um, who were able to prove that they are independent power producers and that they are able to secure financing to build a large park such as this. Mm. Um, this is the second park on the refit program that has been built um, thus far. Uh, the first has been built in Grootfontein, but this is actually now in terms of parks that are producing for NAM power, this is the third one. Um, our previous park, Omburu uh, Solar Farm, which is right next to Omururu, that was uh, commissioned last year, 2015 in May, and now we've just built our second one. And as part of the refit program, we're likely going to start in the early part of next year on our third park, which is a solar farm in the deep south of Ausenkeer. And that will also be a five megawatt solar farm. Apparently, I understand this is all computerized. Yes, yes. So what we, because of the nature of Namibia, that this is a very high tech uh, technology, um, there is a lot of little moving parts and a lot of panels, as you can see, there's over 20,000 panels installed here. Um, and, and we also have everything on a turning uh, table which tracks the sun throughout the day. So there's a lot of little things, irrespective of the high quality that we are installing, there's always the potential of little things going wrong. And because uh, these parks are sitting quite isolated in the bush and so on, we had to come up with a solution and we've incorporated a lot of the best practice uh, uh, solutions available all over the world mm. that we can monitor every component of this entire park basically from our cell phones. So if a panel, one of these panels of the 20,000 panels starts underperforming, we will be able to see it on our cell phones or on our computers in the office and we can then send the maintenance team out to come and resolve the problem as quickly as possible so that we can absolutely be certain that we have a permanent high quality power supply throughout the year. But the beauty of this design that we've got here as well is that we've tried to decentralize a lot of it as much as possible. So in other words, if a chunk of the panel stop producing, it won't impact the major part of the, the, the park. We'll still produce our minimum required um, output, which is then five megawatts. Um, and then we can take our time to obviously fix the, the, the thing. So we have oversized a little bit so that we are certain that even with a little bit of inefficiency here or there or damage here and there, we will still be able to produce. Talking about maintenance, you also mentioned now the word maintenance. In comparison, how can we, one can compare this with, uh, let's say, coal or diesel power stations? Okay, coal or diesel uh, power stations, I personally am not so familiar with a lot of those, uh, those technologies, but they are often based on massive gensets. Um, and and the, the thing is, if something goes wrong with one of them, you have to actually put off a big percentage of your productive capacity uh, before you can actually do anything there. Whereas with our park, because we've actually broken down the inverters across this park, instead of having one or two large inverters, we've actually got 120 tiny little inverters. So if one of those inverters has any problem, we literally lose less than 1% of our production capacity. And we can then come, it's, they weigh, they're a bit heavy, but it'll require two people, so it's 70 kilograms, you plug and play, change it out, and you've got your full capacity back up and running. Um, so we've gone for that design because of the, the nature of Namibia, far distances, isolated parks, and so on. And thus far, it's really working very, very well. Obviously, contractors, subcontractors also need it in a project like this. Yes. <laughs> so um, InnoSun contracted um, NEC, which is Namibian in, uh, Engineering Corporation, um, as well as LNZ, um, 
to do the construction of the plant um, and we were very 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 happy with their work so InnoSun has is definitely going to want to continue with that relationship with them and uh, we've actually now gone into an operations and maintenance contract with LNZ. If you can look over my shoulder here, you've got some of the maintenance teams actually busy just working on one of the tables, just tightening up, making sure that everything is working nice and smoothly. And we are very, very happy with how they are um, assisting us in managing this plant. So if a wind were to blow against these right now, there would be a lot of force against the legs that are plugged into the ground. And even though we've gone for some of the heaviest uh, the heaviest installations that are available to us so these are really really robust we still want to be safe so over there you will see there's a little anemometer on top of the transformer and that anemometer is permanently measuring the wind speed and once our wind speed hits above a certain uh, height which we consider dangerous you will see all of these panels will go into safety mode and within minutes they'll turn nice and flat just like that and then the wind can just blow right past without pulling onto the, let's call them, uh, solar panel parachutes, as it were. So that's one of the, the major critical safety components that we've got in. From an electrical point of view, we've got a lot of uh, programs that we've got in where NAM power can communicate with our plant. And if there's any faults in the, they are in the plant or in the line between the plant and their grid, then the NAM power can will be notified immediately and they can take action they can either switch off the plant or they can disconnect the, the 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 line so all of those things we have taken a lot of time to make sure that this plant is incredibly safe